Understanding your enemy, no matter how vile, is the key to defeating them. Thanks to his mighty gravit armor, the apothecary Biologus has no issue advancing through enemy fire to take samples of enemy biomatter. In this guide, we'll be showing you how to paint this apothecary Biologus in the colors of the Ultramarines. And before you know it, it'll be ready to head onto the battlefield, carrying out that research in the field. If you're new to painting, you can check out the Citadel Color Painting Essentials videos to learn more about it. The paints we've used in this guide are listed on screen now. Remember, we're painting in the colors of the Ultramarines, but you can choose to paint your miniatures however you like. Also on screen now is any additional equipment we've used in this guide. This includes paintbrushes and mediums. However, feel free to use whatever brushes you're most comfortable with. And if you don't have mediums at home, you could use water instead. So to start off with, we've undercoated our model in grey sear. Doing this will give us a great head start on that white armour. Now the first thing we're going to do is apply Ulthuan grey all over the miniature, focusing on that armour. We're using a medium base brush here as we don't need to worry about being neat, and a larger brush will also help to avoid some brush strokes. This is a layer paint, but we can use these for base coating too. It just might take a couple more coats to fully cover. Now you might wonder why we're not painting white armor in white. This is actually a bit of an off gray, but once we've added the shade later on and then highlighted back up, the armor will read as a crisp white. Also, if we started off with a base coat of white, we'd then struggle to find a color bright enough to highlight it with. Once all that armor's painted, we're going to move on to the black, and we'll use Abaddon Black for this. You might find it better to switch to a smaller brush here. We're using a medium layer brush, and we'll be painting the undersuit and the gun casing, as well as a few other details on the miniature. This is a base paint, so we need to thin it down with some water and apply a couple of layers of paint. This will avoid clogging up any detail. Now we're going to add in some of that iconic blue. We'll be using Macrag Blue to paint the shoulder pad. Again, thin this down and apply a couple of layers. If you get any on the white, just thin down some Ulth 1 grey and tidy up your mistake. And with those first few base coats done, we can already see this model starting to take shape. Next, we'll be painting the red details using Mephiston Red. This will be the cloak and some iconography, as well as the eye lens and any purity seal wax too. A small layer brush will probably work best here, as some of these details are quite intricate, so this will give us more control of the paint. Again, thin it down and apply a few layers. Now painting around white armor can be quite unforgiving as those mistakes do tend to really show up. So if you do need to tidy up any of those mistakes, it is important to make sure you thin your paint and apply a few layers. The more paint we add onto the armor, the more texture we build up on the model. And as we said, white is quite unforgiving. So just take your time and be patient. It really is worth the effort. Now we'll be using Wraithbone and we'll be using this to paint the parchment. Again, thin it down and just carefully apply a few layers. Make sure you leave each layer to dry fully before you apply the next one. Next, we'll use Celestra Grey to paint the rocks on the base. We're using a medium layer brush here as we want to be neat around the feet of the miniature, but you could use a larger brush if you're more comfortable with that. Just like with all the other base paints, thin it down and apply a few layers. Just take your time here as there is a lot of intricate detail and it's quite easy to miss bits on the base. Now we'll be painting our first metallic area. So this will be Lead Belcher for the silver details. Now there are quite a lot of silver details on the model and you can refer back to the box art if you're ever unsure of where to place certain colors. So just take your time and work your way around the miniature picking out all of those details. We'll need to thin this paint down just like all the other base paints. Be careful that it doesn't get too watery as then it won't settle on the miniature properly. And now that paint job is really taking shape. We've just got a few more base coats to do. Now it's time to add in that gold and we'll be using Retributor Armor for this. We'll be using this to paint lots of the iconography on the model. Again, with a small layer brush, thin your paint down and apply a few layers. Take care around the white like we said before. It's normal for paints to separate when they've been stood in the pot for a while, so make sure you give it a good shake before you open it and use it on the miniature. And once you've finished using metallic paints, it's always a good idea to change your paint water. This will avoid any shiny flakes getting into your non-metallic paints. Once that's finished, all our base coats are done. We can move on to some contrast and shades now. So for our first contrast paint, we're going to use Iron Jaws Yellow, and we'll use this on the lamp and some of the pipes too. Using grey sear as an undercoat means that these contrast paints will be really bright and vibrant, so they'll really stand out against that white armour. Now we'll be using Striking Scorpion Green on some of the other details. 
When you're using contrast, it's best to apply it quite heavily and neatly, working in small areas. If you find that it is pooling too much, clean off your brush and use that to soak up any excess. And if you find that you do accidentally get some on any other areas, just tidy back up with the previous colours. Now we're going to paint some of those blue details using Frost Heart. Again, this will be really bright and vibrant over that undercoat. When you're using contrast, make sure that you haven't got any water on your brush, as this could drop into the contrast paint and dilute the colour. This will make it more difficult to control on the miniature, and it also won't be as vibrant. Now we've added those details, we've really got some bright colours on that miniature, and it's looking awesome. So now we can move on to some other stages. The next thing we're going to do is apply a recess shade using the aptly named Apothecary White. So using a small layer brush, we'll take the paint carefully from the pot, making sure that we haven't overloaded our brush. Then we'll just drop that into any of the recesses in the armour. If we applied this all over the armour, it would change the whole colour. We want to avoid this as we just want the depth in the recesses. So doing it this way round means we'll probably only have a few small mistakes to tidy up later. Now this will take a little bit of time, but it's well worth the effort, so just systematically work your way around the miniature, picking out all of those panel lines. You'll see that this adds loads of subtle depth to the miniature, and we wouldn't want anything darker with that white armour. Adding a recess shade is a great way to add lots of interest to a model, and it helps to really break up that armour. Now we'll be using Agrax Earthshade and Lamia Medium, and we'll be painting the gold, the red and the parchment. So to start off with, we'll be taking one part Lamia Medium to one part Agrax Earthshade, and we'll be using this on the red and the parchment. We'll apply this all over the parchment, just being careful to control any excess pooling. Now for some of the smaller red details, we'll apply it in the same way, but when we come to the cloak, we don't want to apply it all over the cloak, as it will change the overall colour. So again, we'll apply this just as a recess shade, so just dropping that shade carefully into any of those folds. If it does overspill anywhere, just take some Mephiston Red and use that to tidy back up. And then we'll take it straight from the pot and apply this onto the gold areas. This will add loads of age and depth, and we can really see that everything is starting to tie together. And next we're going to use Basilicanum Grey and Contrast Medium. We'll be applying this onto the silver and the rocks. So we'll be thinning this down using one part Contrast Medium to one part Basilicanum Grey. Thinning a paint down just means it's more subtle on the miniature. Now you might notice that Basilicanum Grey is a contrast paint, so it might seem a little unusual that we're using it as a shade, but when we thin it down, we can use paint in a variety of different ways to achieve different effects on the miniature. It's a great way to get the most out of one paint. Now your apothecary is more than ready to head onto the gaming table and collect Xenos flesh and esoteric gene tech to analyse later. However, if you'd like to see how to take this paint job up a notch, stick with us. The last thing we're going to do is apply an edge highlight of White Scar. So using a small layer brush, we'll just thin that paint down so that it glides nicely off the brush. We don't want it too watery as it won't settle on the miniature properly. Then we'll work our way around the model, picking out all those hard edges. Run the side of your brush along any of those edges and this will do the highlight for you, achieving a quick and easy highlight. It's up to you how much or how little highlighting you want to do. You could just choose to pick out the most prominent areas if you prefer. And if you make any mistakes, don't worry, just thin down some Ulth 1 grey and cut back into those mistakes. And there we are, your Ultramarine's Apothecary Biologist is finished, ready to collect those vital biomatter samples and devise new ways to turn the biology of his foe against him. You can see that we've applied transfers to our model, and we've based it using a technical paint called Armageddon Dust. If you'd like to learn more about technical paints, you can check out our video all about them. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, you can head to your local Warhammer store where our amazing staff will be more than happy to help. Or head on over to citadelcolor.com. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye!